Hello guys, Nigel here again, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and I'm back with part four of this uh, build of the, the Meng 9K37M1 Book Air Defence Missile System. And as you can see, I've done a little bit off the camera because, you know, there's only so much you want to see me gluing and stuff. And you'll also see I've done a little modification here. More on that in a second. Um, decided to change the build sequence slightly as well. As you know, I went on and glued these parts, D and E, which are these assemblies up here, and H and J, onto the main rail. Um, basically because I had the parts there and I need to sort of reduce the number of assemblies I've got. Dog, dog food trays full of bits everywhere. So um, I, I did that. And then this morning, uh, this morning being the day after I, I did part three, um, I thought I'd go on and glue these ends on. And I realised actually doing it this way round, rather than gluing that on and then putting that on, enables you to make sure that this rail here is square with these rails in here. So basically all I did was put it, put it down and then glued this on and then just made sure that these leg, legs were sitting down. So it's kind of sat on all fours. It's almost like a like a track drag tractor or something, isn't it? You know, <laughs> so you can see there from the side. So um, yeah, don't push them down flat because obviously they sit at an incline, so they don't sit flat on the bench. If I can show you like that, you've got an angle on these going down into there, but um, it enables you to get it these points here and these points here all contacting at the same time, and then it's worth just looking along like this. To check that everything's in line and then uh, we should be good to go so there's, there's those two there now and they're they're drying and um, I also if you remember I managed to sand off those nuts I actually put some tiny bits of um, plastic sprue in there plastic rod should I say to uh, depict the nuts that go in those little cutouts one either side there so uh, so that's done um, I think adding these holes has added to the to the look of the thing um, I think it looks a lot more sort of scale like so I'm happy I did that I think there probably should have been some holes in there as well but um, never mind a bit late now I could add them I suppose you'll never know um, so that's that now if we look here we can see if you remember in the end of part three I glued this together which was basically put in the piston into the 283 bending it over putting that in there and then putting the box together well this morning I've sanded down the joint and it is a lovely lovely joint now so we've got all four corners all nicely radiused as it would have been like a you know a four inch square piece of four inch square 10 gauge tube or something um, and then I thought I know what I'm gonna do I don't like the plastic ram um, you, you paint it shiny and then it slides up and down and the paint sh scratches off. So I'm going to make a chrome steel ram. So I went through my spares box and I found this is slightly bigger. This is about 1.95, I think, millimetres. 1.98 millimetres. This one on here was like 1.88 millimetres. So, you know, it just means I have to drill out the cylinder anyway. Um, so I drilled out this, this pin here, which goes through, which is moulded on, and managed to take this out so I drilled that out 1.2 okay which is basically the size of those holes so that's drilled out so now what I can do is after it's all built I can put a brass pin through there and that will hold that in place and then what I did I stuck this up in um I was going to do it on my lathe I stuck it up in a little tool this little thing great available from um Amazon Genor there's lots of different ones but it's it's a great little tool three speed and that uh, charges off the mini USB off your computer so really really handy little thing comes with lots of different collets as well so and it was really cheap and it comes with grinding stones and stuff so put it in there just got a sanding stick got this down so it was a sort of manageable size and it turns out it's about 1.45 so then I got my steel stuck it up in the lathe and I drilled the end out to 1.5 and now that will go in there like so and then I've got a steel I've basically got a steel hydraulic ram rather than a piece of plastic which is not only stronger but it looks better if you get any paint on it, you could just polish the paint off and um, yeah so the next thing I'm going to do is actually put that ram together let that go hard and then clean the inside of that out to give this a nice sliding fit 
Um, I may even put a poly cap in it or something. So, um, so yeah, what I need to do now is glue that into there. So with a drop of super glue, this should go together really easily. So I'm going to put a tiny drop of super glue on here, nothing much. I don't want it all oozing out everywhere. And twisting as we go. And there we go, that's on. And even though I put that tiny drop on, it still oozed out. So just keep it moving. Let the super glue, there we go, it's gone. And now that is in there, <clears throat> solid. <clears throat> and as I said, you know, because it's steel, because we've got some super glue on it, we can scrape it. Scrape the super glue off any excess that's there, and there we go. So we've now got a hydraulic ram which is made of steel rather than one made of plastic. So, what I'll do now is I'll go on and get that cylinder together, which is I'm not sure where the cylinder assembly comes in, it's already there. Here we go. So it's these parts here. So I'm going to get those two glued together and then once they've gone hard, I can uh, ream them out or something. Right then, guys, here we are back again. This is actually a few seconds for you. It's actually about two days since I last uh, filmed anything on this. And as you can see, I've made up the cylinder and we've got our nice uh, metal piston there going in and out of there. Nice sliding fit, so that's lovely. I've added these pipes. Unfortunately, um, if you have got this kit, have a look at yours. My Sprue C has a terrible amount of mismatch in the mould. So these actual pipes, the, the actual moulding, instead of being like this, they're like this. Uh, you can actually see when you look end on, if you can pick it up, when you look end on, you can see on that fitting, it's actually a parallelogram. It's not even... Um, it's not even square so you know it's got quite a lot of mismatch on there which is unfortunate again i keep finding stuff on this kit this i don't know it's just not the usual mang i'm used to um i just hope that pants here is better also um as you'll know today is saturday the 23rd november 2019 or is it the 24th it's the 23rd um basically as you'll know i put a video out yesterday about this new copper thing so i'm gonna start each segment now of this build by showing you this. This is the kit we're building and as you can see on the front of the box here the top line says this product is for users aged above 14 only and at the bottom it says this is not a toy. Thank you. Right so moving on uh, that's all still soft and you know don't really want to play with it too much. I've also made that brass pin that goes in there so now that will um, that'll hold the, uh, the piston in place. So that's all looking lovely now. So we'll put those to one side. Now, one of the issues I have is in this box, I have a sprue, this one, which has this on it. And I'm worried about it getting damaged or damaging something else. So I want to go on and build this radar assembly, which is here. So in this little segment, whoops, my that's not clever. <laughs> um, in this little segment, we're going to actually put this section together 25 B <laughs> if you like so I'm gonna get these parts off the sprue and then we'll see how they all go together okay so all these parts are cleaned up uh, and there is a lot of cleanup required there's a lot of sprue nibs uh, some of them are the type that go on the back of the door and then you have a, a nice clean edge to um, to deal with uh, some are there's a lot of ejector pin marks uh, there's a lot of ejector pins with flash on them um, these parts here, these are the little locking clamps, A25 and A24, they look like the ones that, that sort of clamp over and hold the, the radar part shut. It looks as though this kind of, in real life, um, it looks like this would be attached onto here and then that would open like that to allow access to the inside of the radar. Um, so that's the way it looks like it's going to work. So basically, we're going to have this a different colour. They all seem to be a different colour when you look at the images online. Um, and whether there's going to be a join there or if it's the whole thing, that depends on really what pictures you look at. Some are just a different colour from 
like that part there is a different colour. Some are a different colour, that part from that part, and some is the whole lot. I think I'm going to go with having this half different colour to the rest of it. Some look like they've actually been brush painted because there's paint going over onto the uh, onto these parts. So um, I think I'm going to have that a different colour to that. Well, this will be the same colour as the rest of the, the vehicle, and that will be a different colour. Um, or you could have the whole thing, but, you know, we'll see. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it all together anyway, and then probably leave this off as an assembly and add it afterwards. Um, either that, or I could use leave this separate from that and attach that to the vehicle. The trouble is then those little tiny clamps um, that hold everything shut uh, will be knocked off. So probably best just glue it all together. Something I have noticed, something I think we need to be aware of, um, we've got A25 and A24, which are these clamps here. There's six of them. And the difference is, when you look at the... Try and show you on here. If you look... Just get me a pair of tweezers. Um, on the A24s... If I can get this up close to show you. Focus. If you look on the right-hand side... The A24 there has got a pin on the back of it, and the A25 doesn't, it just has an ejector pin mark. Now, I can't see any other difference on them at all, but as you can see there, it's telling you to fit A24 to the top. And if we come along and put this together, if we then add, I'll use the tweezers so you can see it clearly. If we then add A24, this wants to keep falling apart. If we add A24 to the top with the pin on it, as you can see, it's sitting up a mile high. So I really do think that pin needs to be removed. I don't know if you can see that. Get it up close and get it to focus. When I put that on, it's sitting up too high. So I think I'm going to cut that pin off. But the thing is, it's got me confused. I can't really see any other difference in them. Um, maybe there is actually a difference on the back let's just have a look at these and compare them no i, I can't see the difference in them at all so a little bit weird um but anyway we'll keep the ones with the pin on separate and then we can uh, we know that we've got those those to deal with separately and and cut that pin off so there we go so that's those there right so first thing I'm going to do is glue these halves together and make sure I get them in the right position so I'll just take some of my extra thin I'll run that round there I'm not going to flood it because that is actually a natural join and I want it to remain a sharp a sort of sharp seam rather than a you know something that's been blended in so that'd be enough to hold that together. Then we can add our radar. Now, something I have done with here, again, this is something these little premium hobbies sanding blocks come in really handy for. I noticed that on the back edge where the mould, it's like a, it's got a, it sort of comes along and it just tapers out at the very end. So I've just sort of gone over, got the 800 grit here, and just straightening it out so that it hasn't got that sort of raised area it looks like it's sort of mold shrinkage or whatever and um it's not very it's not very big but it is noticeable we just put those together again i think there is a natural seam here so we don't need to worry about um trying to hide it as it were what i'll probably do is just run over it with a fine stick afterwards just to remove any glue marks there we go so that's that glued on okay so you can see what well, I want I just wanted to get this sprue out of the box because I had this great big lump on it and I was worried that it was going to break other stuff so um then we come along with these doors we've got these access doors um 11 and 12 are here they're obviously it's obvious which one is which because they're handed but we've got 32 33 34 and 35 I've marked those two three four and five so that we um so that we know which one's which. So I'm going to get that's that way round like that. So here's door 11. So that one's going to go in like this. 
Now, remember I told you there are ejector pin marks at the back of these and they are flashy. They need to be sanded to make sure your doors sit nice and flush. So I'm just going to sit that on there and you can see that sits lovely. And then what I'm going to do is just put some extra thin in the hinge areas like so. And that should be enough to hold it. I don't want glue oozing out everywhere. I want a nice, in fact, what I will do is just underneath, I'll just put one drop and then not touch it. What I want is I want the doors to look like they are separate rather than them, um, you know, have glue oozing out of them or have a perfect seamless joint or anything. So we could just put a drop of glue on each hinge like so. And then I'm going to put a drop underneath and not squeeze it. There we go. So that's them on. Then we've got with it that way up, we've got 32 on the right. So here's 32 like so. So that's going to go in there. And again, I'm going to put the, the glue in the hinge. And then I think I'll just put a drop on the inside that can capillary under. And then next to that, we've got 33, which is this one. And just put a drop on the inside, let it go under. There we go. And the secret is don't touch them. You know, not until the glue is sort of started to gel off. Like give it a few seconds and then just perhaps now give them a tap down. You just want to make sure they're both square to each other. Again, very sloppy fit. So get them square and level. There we are. And as you can see, they look like separate doors rather than having a, a nice, you know, seamless joint. And then over here, we've got the same here. We're going to have five on, no, we're going to have five on this side. Like so, without it falling off. Without it falling off. Again, a very sloppy fit. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to glue one hinge. And I'm going to put the other one on. And just glue one hinge. Just hold them in place and then I can make sure they're aligned visually. Like so. Nope, they're still not right. Oops, they're still not right, are they? There we go. And I'm just going to put a drop of glue in the middle just to lock them together. Worst thing is they fall off. <laughs> you don't want that happening. So that's those on. Then we've got these parts here, A12, which are the lifting eyes. So these are going to sit in here nicely like that. Now they're going to need some Mr. Servicer around them because they, they're not a very good fit. So we can afford to get some gl proper glue into them. I think I'll have to check my references again. There may be a big weld seam around these. So we'll have a look. If there is, I'll show you how I do weld seams. And I'm just going to run some extra thin around those lifting eyes. I've cleaned them up. Luckily, these are um, on the A sprue, which is nice. If they were on the C sprue, they would have terrible mismatch on them. Unfortunately, my C sprue is awful. Um, so there we go. That's that all done nicely. Make sure that one's square. In fact, what I'm going to do is push them in and just have a gap on the outside. There we are. And as I say, I'll check my references and if there's supposed to be a weld seam around there, we'll put one on. Um, <clears throat> now we've got these little locking clamps, which, which are the hand wheels that lock it all together. So we've got these, which are 25s. And there's a bit of seam clean up on these. I've decided to leave it until it's on and deal with it then. So 
what I'm going to do here is come along pick this one up I should be able to just place that on and hopefully it'll stay there and then come in with a drop of glue on the back and then give it a little push there we go that's staying in place like that and I'm going to put a drop of glue on the uh, opening side again these are a very very sloppy fit the, the triangular hole that you go in is much bigger than it needs to be hmm you know I'm pretty tempted to buy that panda kit and see what it's like because people knock panda um, they aren't the best kits of the world no but neither is this one okay so they're on there get them square so that they look right there we go and then we've got them got two on this end again pick them up drop them in place and that's not going to stay there so I'm going to have to put a drop of glue in there first like so give it a little push down that should hold that in place and then I'm going to put a drop of glue on this side again don't bother using your quick setting for this because by the time you get your part there it will have dried out ordinary time the extra thin is fine and don't put too much in otherwise when you push your part down you'll get it oozing out everywhere but then maybe there's supposed to be a weld line there anyway so I'm just going to put another drop of glue in there just to make sure they're not a dry joint glue some around there and then once that's all dry I'm going to go around with extra thin and deal with the seams and I also want to check if these knobs are supposed to have a rounded front on them if they are I'll put a drop of PVA on them and then that will shrink back now these on the top are these 24s and as I was saying earlier they they appear to have this pin on the back but there's nowhere for the pin to go so I've got to somehow remove that pin so I'll try first of all with my snippers that's got most of it off now try not to cut myself again those who follow my Land Rover build you know I cut my finger the day before yesterday and it didn't half bleed I actually went in the end of the knife in that finger there went straight in um, and you can see how deep it went by how long the cut is so in the, the blade probably went in a good six or seven millimeters so luckily I don't think I've done any damage to anything else so I'm going to put a drop of glue in there and then just drop that on and that fits much better now without that pin so what looks like a pin is actually an ejector pin mark an ejector pin so um one to be aware of um, and as I say I can't oh yes there is a difference there is a difference in the sort of hinge part of the bolt you can see this one's square and this one's round I'll give you a close-up in a sec I'll just um, clean this one up get rid of that pin so I was hoping to get some work done on my um, my defender this weekend I've got to get it ready for its MOT I ruined the um, one of the screen washer jets so I bought it's got the, the single sort of single screen washer jet unit in the middle of the windscreen with two nozzles on it and I managed to try to adjust it I actually um, destroyed the driver's side ball so I now get like a a sort of three millimeter diameter stream of water coming out of it about this long so it's not really going up the windscreen so I don't think that will pass the MOT the actual windscreen washer jet itself a total sum of three pounds fifteen I couldn't believe how cheap it was um, but I got to the dashboard out to fit it so great 
which I enjoy. Um, so there we go. So that's those in. I'm just going to show you now close up. Here is the difference if you have got the parts muddled up. If you look, it would appear when you look at 24, it looks like the actual swivel area that I'm pointing at now, if you compare that to a 25, this one's sort of square and that one's kind of radius. So I think that's the difference there. So they're on. So I'm just going to go and let that dry and then we'll deal with some seams and stuff. Um, going back to the instructions, this here I thought I better glue that together and let that go off because that's going to need some seam work. It's a very, very prominent part of the model. Um, so that's there with the clamps on it. That's drying off now. So I'll let that go off. Get some Mr. Servicer in the seam and sand that nice and flat before we put these bits on. Um, so we've got to look at what we're going to do next. Right, so darting around everywhere. I've now come back to step 18. And I'm going to start working on this, um, the... Uh, the actual um, launching platform. So first thing to do, we've got some sprue nibs here with some injection points, not ejection points, injection points. We've got one there, which I'm sure is not supposed to be there. No, we can see there, there's nothing. And we'll need to go to the page. Yeah, there's nothing there. So we need to clean that one up. So we're gonna basically come in with our nippers and just do that. Then I'm gonna come in with a radius blade and just see if I can shave some of that away without digging in and then I'm going to get a skinny stick just to go over and get it like this and then I'm going to come in with a magic marker put some dots around it and sand away I'm using this hard um, sanding block from premium hobbies and just gently going across and I'm making sure I'm not touching any of that I just want to make sure that none of that detail is raised yeah those unfortunately those blocks there are slightly higher so that's out of the question I'm gonna to have to use the skinny stick so just gonna gently sand away until my black marks disappear and then I know or pretty sure that that's gone then And I can still feel something there so maybe I could come in like this let's put some dots on there again come in and use the end of the sanding block because I know it's flat I'm not pushing down but what I'll do is I will put a blob in the middle there just to see that There we go. I'll just finish off with the skinny stick <clears throat> just to get rid of the rest of the marks. And I can still feel something there. I'll go off camera and get this done. And there we are, it's gone. Um, that's taken a good few minutes to do. Um, <coughs> excuse me there's quite a raised area there so there we go right so let's get on with this now when we look over the page uh, we've got to put this in with our poly cap and then we've got these three parts here these thick black squares they're basically saying that's the order you should fit them in so again I've got these off there's some massive sprue connection points on these clean them off with the um, with the little sanding block and that way you can ensure you get a nice square straight edge rather than using a soft stick and then you kind of end up with a radius so first things first let's put this one in now this poly cap is slightly pushing out on this so I'm going to use the the quick setting and obviously if I put it upside down the poly cap will just fall out so I'm going to put it in that way and then that can just sit there like so and I'm going to get my quick setting extra thin and drop some down in there and let it run around 
and then just push that down and hold that in place And if you are new to this extra thin quick setting, um, be warned, there is a video. Um, a guy is saying on there that this is basically an accelerator for extra thin cement. It's not. Um, it's a glue that thin, it's a thin, extra thin quick setting. It's exactly what it's called. Uh, but what he's saying is what you do is you put your, you put your extra thin in like so. Okay. And then you add your quick setting, like so, and it accelerates it, much like a super glue accelerator. Um, factually incorrect, I'm afraid. It's not, it's, uh, it's actually a, um, it's just a quick setting, extra thin cement. It's got more xylene or whatever it is in it, so it dries quicker. And also with these products, you need to be careful, um, as it says on here, for adult modelers only, age 14 years old and above. So uh, beware of that one. <clears throat> right um so here we go we've got these parts here so this one is d26 so that's going to slot in there now we've got a a big mold seam there i'm going to make sure i get rid of that because that may hold it apart yeah there is quite a large mold seam there so i'm going to scrape that away If we do get any gap, we'll have to get some Mr. Servicer in there. I've got the same on it. So mismatching the mould is what it is. Um, it's shifted, on my example anyway, the, the, that part of the mould is shifted to the right. So just uh, bear that one in mind. So we'll sand that out as good as we can. Just sort of try and blend it a bit. Okay, so this one's going to go in first, so that's going to slot in under there like that. Okay, and that's a that's a nice fit. Okay, that area is raised anyway. Right, so it's going to need some Mr. Service Radio because we've got a joint here. So I'm not going to use my quick setting. I'm going to use the ordinary extra thin. Let that capillary in there. And then I'm going to put some more here. Let that capillary in there. And then this joint down here. I'm going to put some in and then not touch it because I don't want glue oozing out. Because that is a feature of the, uh, of the part. There we go, that's that one in. And then this side is going to go in as well, same. So that's going to slot up under there like that. Okay, that goes in. There's a little lug goes behind that step there. So that's going to need a clamp on it. So we'll get a peg on it to start with. In fact, I'm not going to worry about the glues in it because it's going to need Mr. Surfacer anyway. So I'll put some glue in there first. Then we'll put a peg on it. What I'm going to do here is hold this in place. And then peg it. I don't want glue oozing out of that joint. Okay, I'm gonna make sure the pegs away from there. And then I'm gonna put a drop of, now that needs to go down a touch, I think. I'm gonna put a drop of cement in here. That will hold that, and then I can put some in the back there. And another drop in there. That will hold all that in place. And this is where the hydraulic ram is going to go that lifts the, the missiles are going to sit on here. So, uh, yeah, very nice. Um, 
and the radar is going to go on the front of there like so so it's all going to look very nice and posh we can see I've done Mr. Servicer on those knobs and everything and I've also put some Mr. Servicer on that joint and then I'm going to go around afterwards with a um, cotton bud so it's just stays but I leave, we leave a bit of a seam there so uh, that's that in place now what it's saying here now is this one goes in so this one's going to go in that way round and sit between them and once again we've got a sloppy fit you can see we've got a load of mismatch in there so hmm. And then I'm going to put some cement in that joint there. Let's get that peg out of the way. And just let that capillary in. That'll hold that in place. So there we go. So we've got that one in the back there. We really need to make sure that is in there solid. We don't want that falling out. Okay. I'm going to try and pull it out and I can't so that's okay right so there we go that's all together now and um, as you can see we've got a down in that corner there we've got a big gap so uh, that's going to have to have something put in it unfortunately but hey what I could do is actually pull that panel away from the side no I might damage it I just have to put something in there um, we'll just leave it as it looks like it's a bolted on panel anyway I could perhaps slide it across to equal up the gap either side here we are that'll look fine once it's painted and everything so there we are so that's all together now I'm gonna put a peg on there as well I think hold that together and then I'm going to be doing some drilling and trickery with this end so that we're able to build the model with the, the loader assembly off and then just pin it on afterwards and push a pin in. So I've had a look at doing that and I think it's possible. So we shall give it a go. Right. Um, so moving on now to part two. So we've got in here. Okay, that's there. I was, thinking, I was thinking, where on earth is this? I was looking in there. So we need to get these parts off the screw. So that's these big parts here. And then this will get me to the point where I need to let things wait and set again. So... One of the big things about modelling is patience. Um, now these parts here, I have to be careful not to lose those, so I'm going to cut that off of there, put it in my little dog food bowl pot. Because none of these are actually used right away so we need to be a little bit careful not to lose those I guess you could actually leave them attached if you wanted to so we'll just remove those sprue nibs there we don't need to worry too much about that because none of it's going to be seen that goes down inside the hull and we've got these big sprue connectors around the outside here which need to be sanded off so I'm just going to cut away the worst ah these are on those 45 degree angles so I'm going to cut away the worst of them Careful, they're not sprue nibs, they're part of the model. Okay, and then with a knife, we can just come along and remove the majority of it. See that straight side there. Just remember in my pants here review, I did the um, 
talked about these uh, chamfered edges and how it's how important it is to keep the the sanding square and flat so I'm going to change to the 200 grit that's where these things come in because they're hard sanding blocks and they're really good for this kind of thing so we can get the sanding block on there get it to the right angle you can feel when you rock it you can feel when you're at the right angle and just go along like this and just literally sand that off and retain our squareness and straightness on that edge like so there we go And then the same on here. Just like so. As you can see these things give you a lovely square sharp edge with no rounded off corners or anything it keeps it straight it's all good now we need c62 believe this is c yep c62 is there right on the end which is handy so we'll cut that one off and we need d28 Here's D, where's 28, there it is there, trim that off. If you notice I'm not going too close to the parts, I'm, my nippers aren't the, they're, they're not the newest of nippers, in fact I've got a brand new set here, I've bought these, I've got the, um, I've got the, uh, <clears throat> 74035 these are the extra fine pointed ones so they're they're uh, a little bit weaker but they're um they're a, a finer point um let's just have a look on the back of here yeah, it's all in japanese um but yeah i'm not too sure about the um the differences but that's the 74035 i think these are the 74029 which is slightly different so well I get those from Japan um, if you look on some of your more well-known websites in the UK you'll find they're like 20 30 pounds or something or 25 35 pounds and even more and you can get them from Plaza Japan for like 16 pounds and by the time you've had them imported and paid your duties I think they're, they're, it's worth it yeah I'm thinking it's not 25 it's about 35 pounds they charge for them over here not exactly sure what this is but uh, better clean it up anyway it's very strange this model they give they give you all the option to have the hatches open and everything and there's no interior detail whatsoever there's not even like a you know a lump of plastic to resemble a seat so there's nothing at all um, so this is all cleaned up now so that's cool now this is going to go in that way around we can see we've got a little angle on the top there and then this has got an angle on its molding so I'm going to make sure so I didn't need to clean the back of that up at all but what I do want to do is just quickly clean the front up like so and then drop that in in fact I'll use the quick setting in case I knock it afterwards so 
that's got in there. Give that a nudge and move it around. And that'll help to seal the joint. We'll have to put some Mr. Servicer around there. As you can see, there's a, a joint, so that's going to have to be dealt with. But I like the way they've done that. Rather than just have it going on from the outside, that's um, give me a nice strong joint. And then this part here looks like it just sits on top of there. Which is a bit strange. And that needs to be sanded flat. It's got ejector pin marks on it. So once again, little sanding block to the ready. I'm not quite sure what you're going to see of all of this when it's done, but uh, we'll have a look in a minute. Yeah, that needs to be sanded down flat. As you can see, we've got lines down the front as well. Um, I just want to see how much of this is going to actually be seen. Okay, this is the underside of where the uh, beam goes, so it is going to be seen. So I'm going to get a skinny stick and come in here and one of these matadors. Look at that, perfect. So I've got a 600 grit here. This is one of the um, Infini matadors. It's perfect for that. So I'll just go in there and remove those draft marks from the ejector pins on there. And then this one here we are going to need to scrape, I believe. If you keep the blade, if you try and go straight across, all you will do is replicate what you've got. If you keep the blade at an angle and go across, it will actually remove the plastic around it. So we can just sort of scrape and blend. Like so. And then I can get it there with a skinny stick. And we're never actually going to look at it that way. So if we haven't got it perfectly straight, there's a bit of an angle on there or whatever, then that's fine. But um, basically, when you look at it from behind or down from above, you won't see these horrible draft lines from the uh, from the moulding. There we go. I actually should have a 400 grit here handy somewhere. There's my 400 grit. And that's going to go in there and take some more meat off. It's still fine. It's not going to leave any uh, bad marks or anything. It's going to be fine for painting. But there we go. That's those that horrible line gone. Now, unfortunately, on the back of here, you can see that that's no longer straight. So what we can do there just to because it's not going to be seen, we can just come along with our knife and just straighten that out like so. OK, and then scrape here or cut even just to straighten that area there up. We got some flash on there as well. So get in there and get the flash off the sides of that. And there we go. All nicely done, like so. Right, so now we can glue this one on. Using a quick setting once again. And then in a couple of minutes I'll be able to sand that flush. And get it all looking pretty. aligned and then when that goes in there that's what we're going to see from above so yeah you can see it's uh, 
the sanding we did earlier doesn't really match it. You're not going to see very much of it at all. There we go. I think what I'm going to do is put this surfacer in there and then sand it so that we get a, a kind of a, a step, if you like. Just it'll give something for the wash to pick up on. So I think I'll do that. I'll put some of the surface in there and let that dry. Um, what it's saying down here, when we look at putting this together, it's saying we need to put that together first. Again, we've got these blocks. So it's saying we need to put this on first, and that's going to sit literally in there like so. Now I've got some flash on that edge. It's just bits left from sanding. And again, you see we've got these draft lines here from the ejector pin marks. But I don't think they're going to cause us an issue. No. So what we can do, that's going to need some Mr. Surfacer in there as well. We've got a seam across there and down to each side. So I want to make sure they're all good. And we've got some flash on the back there. So we easy to sand that off now. Yeah, that's going to need some work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my, you very rarely see me use this. This is my Tamiya thick cement and you'll see this is quite go gooey. I could just brush some of that on there, like so. And then put this on. And that's it. And then I can just stick a couple of close pegs on there. And that should do us. So we'll let that go off, get some Mr. Servicer on it, and then we're... Uh, Back to waiting for things to dry again. Right, better call this um, this part four to an end because it's getting a bit lengthy, isn't it? So as I showed you earlier, I glued these beams together. These are the um, these are the, it's called the fixing device, and it fits down here. And this is what the, the the missile launchers will sit on when it's down. So as you remember, I glued this together, Mr. Surfacer, clean up the seams, the um, the uh, the sanding block like so, get them nice and smooth. So they're completely invisible. And then um, I just put like a 1.2mm drill through those holes at the end to clean them up and get them round again. And then we've got to clean up there. Now these parts here, these are the actual mounts, they're part number A18. And they go down like that. Now to get a little tip for anybody, to get a nice joint, whenever you've got two parts that go together and then you're going to glue something on the top, like say cylinder heads onto a onto an engine, engine you know, a, a four cylinder engine block. Um, what I always do is come along with a round blade, a round blade like that sort of shape, and then I put the centre of the radius, or the radius, in the centre of the cutout, and then go like this, and scrape away the plastic in the middle, just to make sure that you've got a kind of, what you're trying to achieve is at least a, a flat, if not concave face, and it just makes sure that seam is gone, and then with the tip of the blade, just come along and scrape across like so, and get rid of the, the plastic shavings that you've scraped up. Ow, I just stuck the knife in my cut. If you saw that, if you didn't, go back and watch it in slow motion. There we go. So that's that. Now on the top of here, we've got this little part here, little plate which goes on, that's C79. I'm just going to lightly rub over that and make sure that's flat. So this little plate here is going to go on like so. So that's C79 in place. I get my extra thin. Just put some around around that. Let the glue flow under it. Give it a little push down. So that's that in. I'm just going to see some glue is oozed out there so I'm just going to brush over it and that'll get rid of that. Like so. There we go. And then these parts here, these are just going to go into the the grooves. I, I, it looks like they're totally symmetrical. Um, 
and then I'm just going to put them in and then I shall dab some glue on them and then what I will probably do is run around to Mr. Service of 1200 and remove it with a, with a cotton bird and alcohol so that I can um, so that I can uh, basically have a sort of a, a seam there but no no gaps or anything and as you can see because I've scraped the, the middle out they sort of fit a lot better and I am just checking to see they are symmetrical yes they are so put some glue on them and that'll be that done so um, there we go thanks for watching this has been part four uh, once this Mr. Servicer has gone off I'll just go around with a cotton bud and in fact I'll show you um, I'm going to use the First one they come to is the real colour high compatibility thinner and I'm just going to put the cotton bud in there and then just rub over the top, soften the Mr. Surfacer and then just gently with the cotton bud just rub away and what you do is you leave the, the Mr. Surfacer in the corners, in the joints, whatever so it's not like if you sand it you end up losing the joint completely like on a aircraft fuselage have say but in areas like this like around a door or just soak up some of that excess there because this stuff will attack the plastic if it's left on there for a long time but it needs to be like you know 10 minutes I think so uh, just rub around like that and what that does that leaves the Mr. Surfacer in the corners so you don't have a gap but you don't sort of hide the edge away like you would if you sanded it okay so i'll go around the rest of it and do that and um and that'll be it and i'll go around those as well and then i'll probably just run a sanding stick very quickly over the front of the the latches the dobs that they uh lock this radar cover on with there we go as you can see, there's hardly anything that Mr. Servicer left in the seam, but we have got some left around the around the latches where they're bolted on. There we go. You can see, just rub it away, and off it comes. Like so. And there we go, we've gone all the way around there now. And just use the other end just to remove the excess. I'm going to put a little bit of drop on the other end. So I can give it a bit of a clean up. There we go. That's that done. And as you can see, when you look there, you can see that it's it's left it around that latch. I could do the same here around this this lifting eye. Just feather it out. Like so. And there we are. Job done. So we've now got a sort of seamless um, one piece moulding if you like. Um, but, but I'm just going to gently run over the front of these, these knobs with a sanding stick. Just to smooth out the Mr. Surfacer that's on there. Be careful of these. That's one of the problems with skinny sticks. If you fold them, you get this raised paper and it doesn't go down again. So you've got to be careful of those when you are sanding flimsy parts like this. Um, be careful if you, you can actually snap them off if you hit them on one of those ridges. And there we are. 
that's that all done okay so um thanks for watching part four and i'll see you again in part five and we'll by then i'll have all this sanded down oh one other thing i wanted to show you i added some plastic card here where i sanded away so much plastic to get rid of those draft lines um it removed too much material i think so i've just added a piece of ten thousand plastic card so now i can just come in and remove that mr servicer from there as you can see and make sure that it's all flat and square and everything and then i can use my my matador sticks to get in there again and just sand that so that i know that it's actually flat on its front face i'm not undulating all over the place so there we go that's that done and i can run over the top as well then with a skinny stick or use this one in fact that mr service is not quite dry yet and i don't want to clog up my lovely matador sanding sticks so there we are so I'll see you for part five. Uh, in the meantime, there'll probably be another Land Rover video going out. Um, one other thing I will mention, if you remember the missiles, uh, glued them together, left them to go off, and I put Mr. Surfacer in these holes where those dimples are. But here's what I've done. I've sanded it down. And then what I've done is, like I just showed you with the cotton bud, gone over the dimples and just removed the Mr. Surfacer so it just becomes sub-surface. And then you end up, you can see here, I'll show you close up, you can see here there's a dimple. And that's what you want to achieve with your Mr. Surfacer there. So um, that's what they've done. And it's the same with these here. So when it's painted, it should look pretty seamless. Should be in the operative word. I'll see you for part five. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your comments. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for all your kind donations to PayPal and Patreon. They are greatly accepted, uh, greatly re gratefully received, gratefully accepted, gratefully received, whatever. And um, it's all going into a big pot to buy a, a new camera and some better lighting and stuff. Um, I keep saying it, I know. Um, I think what I might do now with the camera, I might see if something comes up in the sales in, you know, around Christmas time. So uh, let's wait and see. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you for part five. Bye for now.